Hi everyone, it's Matt here from GI Energy. Um, as you may have seen in the news in the past couple of days, the Queensland Government have announced a battery booster scheme that's due to arrive in 2024. The exact details aren't completely known, but what we know so far is that 4,000 battery subsidies will be available. Um, this is going to be in the form of an upfront discount of up to $4,000. There will be a uh, means criteria, an income test for that. So households with a combined in income of under $180,000 will qualify for a $3,000 subsidy. If the household income is under $66,000 roughly, there'll be a $4,000 subsidy. And this will apply to existing installations where you already have solar and there'll be a retrofit of a battery and new installations as well. So. On a new installation, there'll be the STC solar subsidy, which you pay for the panels that are installed. Plus, if you qualify for the battery subsidy, um, either three or four thousand dollars that will come off the battery component of that installation. So, at the moment, it's still obviously due. We, we don't know the release date. It's due to have a release date pretty soon. Um, but ultimately, what we wanted to talk about today more than anything I suppose was previous schemes that have occurred here in Queensland and what our experience of those have been. Towards the back end of 2018 the Queensland government did a battery rebate and loan so that was a slightly different way of doing it than, than what's going to occur this time. That was for new installations um, obviously to have the, the loan and the subsidy and then there was a separate one for retrofits of batteries to existing solar. So from that ran from the 18th of November 2018 until the 30th of June 2019. There were four and a half thousand dollar rebates that were only available to quite a select group of installers at that point that were approved solar retailers that had obviously vetted through um, a number of different things. That was quite a big uh, number of applications that we thought originally at the time, but it was quickly apparent that Within about three weeks, 1,500 of those applications had already been exhausted. On this allocation in 2024, they're going to do 4,000, so a pretty similar number, possibly split over two separate financial years or calendar years, just from the initial information that's there. So there's obviously a lot of existing solar installations in place where homeowners are looking to install a battery and also a lot of new installations where solar and batteries want to be installed together. So I guess from that scheme, what did we learn? We learned, we learned a lot, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we were, at that point, were supplying two different um, manufacturers, uh, two different models of batteries as well. We actually ended up installing 434 batteries. So around 10% of all battery installations in Queensland of that scheme were conducted by GI Energy. And there were obviously a number of key points that we learned and there was a lot of change um, a couple of months into that scheme in terms of the inspections that occurred. So even installations that were done early in 2019 had to go back, be re-inspected and if there was something that needed to be brought up to the new regulation that was brought in, that had to be done at the installer's cost. What's being proposed this time is that around two and a half thousand, so more than half of those installations will be inspected by a third party as well. So that's a great thing. Obviously, we welcome and want to raise the bar for our installations, for our competitors' installations as well. Something that a lot of us call co-opetition, because obviously if we're striving for the best and helping everyone else do better, then the customer gets a better experience. What we found uh, from that scheme and um, actually the body that we're looking after the whole scheme afterwards released um, all the details about the inspections, obviously how they felt the whole process went. There were quite a lot of substandard installations, quite a lot that were deemed acceptable and obviously a few that were good and great and so forth. Um, there were also a number of product recalls on certain batteries, certain manufacturers, um, one, two, three, four years later post that scheme, which some are still ongoing. They've been pretty widespread in the news. There've been a lot of ACCC reports and other recalls performed. So what we've, I guess where we focus this time around is really narrowing down on the batteries that we install over the past couple of years. 
and ultimately for something like this we want to narrow that even further just to make sure that obviously we're supplying a reliable quality product that's safe and well installed but ultimately minimising our own risk as well as our client's risk as well. So let's assume that you already have some solar installed at home. You might have a five kilowatt inverter with six kilowatts of panels, maybe even an eight, 10 kilowatt system, even larger if it's a three phase home potentially, and you're looking to retrofit a battery. Most homes will have a standard grid tied inverter installed. Very few would have a hybrid inverter installed. So in that situation, what we recommend is the Tesla Powerwall battery. This has been the most stringently tested, continues to be the most reliable AC coupled solution that's on the market. Everyone knows the Tesla story, the cars, everything about them. And there's over 500,000 of these units that have been installed worldwide at this point. So very proven, very good, very reliable and very good backup support. That's one thing that I really love more than anything. And to give you a third party story, we actually had a client, um, didn't know they had an issue with the system. Tesla had called them directly just to go and check one setting on the, on the power wall. This was all done completely separately by them. It wasn't done by ourselves or the customer. So it just shows the level of detail and the monitoring that goes into these systems nowadays. The power wall two is a 13 and a half kilowatt hour unit, 13.2 kilowatt hour usable. It's got an awesome app, great features there with a single face home can provide backup to the whole home on a three face home, backup to, to one, one phase of the home. So lighting, PowerPoints, internet, whatever people deem is obviously necessary in 2023, 2024 as, a, as this scheme is released. It's pretty good looking battery as well. It looks pretty neat on the wall. Um, it can be floor mounted too. And we get many requests just to obviously add that into existing homes or new built homes where they just want to make it a feature of the home. They know the, they know the brand, they know the value in the product and obviously what it can do. But it really comes back to yeah, the reliability, the quality, the backup supply as well, which is obviously becoming quite a big thing for a lot of homeowners, homeowners that want their energy security now too. They've had decreasing feeding rates. They want to capture their own solar, store that, use that at night. They're integrating electric vehicles with wall chargers, other things into their systems. And we've seen a huge uptick in the, in the past six months specifically, but the past year or more, as the power price keeps increasing, just where clients want to be completely in charge of their own solution. And the app with the Tesla battery is really awesome for that as well. It can be used for time of use purposes. If you're on a time of use rate, it can be obviously force charged, discharged um, in many different situations. So it's a really, really good product. For a new installation, we just need an inverter to go with it. So whether that be a Fronius, a Sungrow, Enphase, whatever inverter, and the AC coupled Tesla just pairs straight with that. The other option um, for a retrofit is you could use the BYD battery. That does need a hybrid inverter. So the existing inverter would either be removed or the hybrid inverter be AC coupled to the existing system. But for a new build, this is quite a popular option that we've been installing a lot of this year. So a big feature of the BYD battery is it's a modular battery. So you can stack the battery over time. So you can start with a small, medium, moderate amount of storage, scale that around your consumption profile, and obviously just build it over time. With a single phase home, you can have either three HVS modules or seven HVM modules in one stack, and then start a second stack, third stack. If it's a three phase home, you can have four and eight and then a second and third stack respectively for that solution. So pretty cool option where you may be new into the home, a new build, not particularly understand the consumption profile, when you use power, how you use power. So a very niche product where you can obviously make that work really, really well. The monitoring's all run through the Fronius platform as well. So you get a full overview of production, consumption, battery state of charge. And you've got full control over that in there. So. It's just a really nice combo that they've obviously worked on together to work. As there are more updates with this scheme, we'll put out some more information. So hopefully that'll be pretty soon. But in the meantime, please have a look at our other blogs, our other videos, and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks.